Hello my smexy ladies and gentlemen. I hope you're all having a great day and I have a feeling I can make it even better. You are here for real YouTube advice because you have seen thousands of those YouTube algorithm hack videos and come up with nothing. Each video sounding so confident that if you just do what they say, everything will work out. In the end, no such luck and once again, you are now here watching my own video, hoping I am different and you can at least learn something here today. Well, good news, I'm going to give you real advice and actually explain myself after, something those other videos never do. You hear them say things like make your thumbnails good but never explain what good actually looks like. You're told to ask for subscribers but never told how to do that or when. Other videos even tell you don't ask for subscribers, which just is even more confusing. Some say keywords mean nothing and others tell you to use services like TubeBuddy or vidIQ. I'm going to share my own experience with all of these things and no, I have not cracked the algorithm. I do not promise things will skyrocket, but things will be better than whatever you have going now. Please do me just one favor in return, make sure that you remember to like the video the moment you realize you have found it ever so slightly helpful. This will let others know at a glance that what they can find here will actually help them on their YouTube journey. Alrighty, let's get to it. So let's talk thumbnails and address this first. Is it true they need to look as good as possible? 100% yes, it helps, but even ugly thumbnails can do well. What we need to understand is what does a good looking thumbnail look like? Does it need to appear like a professional put it together or should it somehow explain everything that is in the video by a single glance or is this a case of less is more? I'm a video games channel and so my experience comes from this area of entertainment but I believe what I have learned can be applied to all channels covering all topics. Let's look at the thumbnail of my current most popular video and it can be our example for the day. This is the thumbnail for a video game coming out called Soul Raver. An announcement trailer was shown to the public and I was excited and so I made a video about it. This video currently has 92,000 views. Let me point out some of the things that I feel work. The text is big and bold, easy to read and only a few words. In my experience, the less words you can use to get your message across, the better. Next up, we have the guy to the right. He takes up half the screen and that's on purpose. He is immediately recognizable to fans as the video game is about him. Familiar <laughs> <laughs> I can't say the word. Familiarity is super important when it comes to thumbnails and getting someone to stop scrolling. Something exciting but detailed will get less attention than something clear and recognizable. I hate to say it, but it's the truth and your click through rate will easily improve the moment you accept this harsh truth. So looking at this other thumbnail I made, this one would get much less clicks than the first I showed you. Even though this actually shows what the game looks like and reveals a lot more, this one requires people to have a slightly longer look to take in the image. When people are scrolling, they're not really thinking much and in autopilot mode. Let's see how the same thing looks, but with the text not following my rules. Even though you could argue this text now reveals more about the video and you would be correct, no one is going to read all that. Very few anyway. So going back to the thumbnail that was a success, the words are big and just a few. The main character is immediately recognizable. I even have in the bottom left hand corner an example of what viewers can expect in the video. Clarity is the key with thumbnails. Now, before jumping on to the next real advice for you all, did you find this first part helpful? Was there a single moment where you appreciated what I said and now you're already thinking about how you can improve your own thumbnails? If the answer is yes, right now, please hit the like button because that's how you do a nice thing for the day and lets other viewers know this video is worth their time and it makes me happy to see that number go up. Alrighty, thank you kindly for those of you kind enough to help me out and let's jump to the next point. It is now time to talk about tags or keywords. These are used to identify your video in relation to others and if you want to appear in the search results. If you know how to scramble your eggs and want to share that with the world, you may use the tag how to scramble eggs and hope for the best. 
Someone typing in that exact phrase in the search department will see your video come up. We also hope that maybe your video is recommended after someone else has seen a similar type of video and will hopefully be sent over to you. You may notice I use the word hope a lot and that's because that's what it is. We hope we are using the right tags and hope our video even pops up in the first place. Considering there are normally hundreds or even thousands of other videos offering pretty much the exact same thing, it's, it's a tough challenge. Now, I used to play the hope game and I personally was not very good at this game. So let's talk about a service like TubeBuddy. So TubeBuddy is a service and plugin for your internet browser that integrates inside of YouTube like I'm showing you right now. Clicking on that gives me a bunch of options, but I want to focus on the reason why I am on this plan myself, and that's the Keyword Explorer option. We talked about how to scramble eggs before as a video idea, but this tool will actually let us know if that is a good idea or not. It will show how many videos have already targeted those tags, how many new searches each month it gets, and give you a nice simple grading out of 100% if you should cover it or not. How much competition there is, and even similar search terms you likely have not considered. This page is powerful because if it's not looking good, change the search term a bit. Experiment until it looks the way you want. You can also see similar tags that other users use. I love this page because it lets me check out the competition and most importantly, it stops me going in blind. With time, you will get more familiar with the tool of course and there are three different price points you can choose. This feature is available in all of them and that includes the cheapest one. I'm on the cheapest plan myself and TubeBuddy is cheaper than similar other online services. You can pay monthly or a year upfront to save money. When I upload this video that you're watching right now, I will be spending plenty of time in the Keyword Explorer myself because I don't even know what tags to use as I type this. But at least I know I won't be playing the guessing game. The right tags do help. Each time I have stopped my membership or tried to just guess or not even use tags, my videos have pretty much been dead on arrival. Not a fun feeling. Play around with the words and experiment. None of these are guarantees, but it certainly improves your chances a lot in the first place. I'll have an affiliate link pinned in the comments section and in the description for you all as well. Now, before proceeding, was the second part helpful? Please like the video to let others know. Okay, on to another real piece of advice. Let's talk video length. I feel this point is rarely brought up, but it's important. YouTube likes playing ads. They make money from those, and so they like videos that can play a lot of ads. You know what videos have the most ads? Longer videos. A 20 minute video can easily have more ads than a 10 minute video. And this is something you need to keep in mind. Before doing your video, look online and see how long your competition is doing their videos for. Learn the average and look at their views so you can see which are doing better. Now, searching for one minute scrambled eggs would favor the short videos, but in general, you want to try and be slightly longer than the others. YouTube will like your video just a little bit more if they can squeeze an extra ad out of yours. That's why YouTube keeps track of your average watch time. If I did a video game review on a game and my upload was 8 minutes long, anyone covering the same game but for 10 minutes will have an advantage over me. The video itself still needs to be good of course and nice thumbnails plus good use of tags and everything else, but length matters in a competitive environment where you are dependent on YouTube recommending your content. And remember, the vast majority of views come from recommendations and not searches. YouTube would rather recommend the 10 minute video over the eight if it has a choice. My views went up a fair bit once I accepted this truth. Remember, this obviously does not apply to videos that offer solutions to a problem. People who want an answer to something would rather the two minute video over you taking forever to get to the point for 10 minutes. How much editing should you do for your videos? Should you spend a whole week working on a 10 minute upload or should it be out the door within a day? Firstly, you need to look at your competition and see what the standard is. I cover video games myself. So in my area, we have people talking on webcams and mixing in video game footage and normally some sort of background music. This is of course different in each area. I doubt you need gameplay footage if you're doing a clothing fashion channel, for example. 
after you have established what this standard is, in other words, what viewers expect from you as a minimum, and decide how you're going to match or exceed that. This isn't in the literal sense. Some people have such a likeable personality that they don't even need to edit their work and that personality compensates for the lack of editing. Other times the editing is so amazing that they can wow viewers from that alone. The trick here is to find the balance between reward and effort. So if you spend 9 hours working on a video and you get 8 views from it, would that make you happy? Would you have felt better if you spent just 3 hours and got 5 views? Simple math like this is actually really important because you need to look after your mental health on YouTube. It's so easy to feel down when all your hard work goes down the drain. Also, you need to think more smart. If 9 hours of effort on a video gets you 8 views on average, but 3 hours gets you 5 views, that means you can get 3 videos out for the same amount of effort and come to a total of 15 views. That's more bang for your buck. You will feel better for it, and as a result of feeling better, your content will improve as you bring a more positive energy to your videos. It also means it's not as big of a deal if a video flops. I do video game uploads. What you're watching right now could have sunk because most of my subscribers would not be interested in this, and my other videos would not be recommending this either since they're not related to YouTube self-help advice and YouTube algorithm hacks and so forth. However, I carefully choose how much of a personal commitment I put into each video, so if one doesn't take off, it's not as much of a big deal compared to if I invested a massive amount of time. Keep in mind this is different for everyone and your goals. Maybe that 9 hours of work per, per video resulted in you getting more subscribers. That's something to consider, but just try to be more wise with your time. The burnout will catch up to you if your results are down after all that effort, and it's an ugly place to be. Some people can get thousands of views to warrant an insane amount of time, some don't have that skill. I am one of them. Now, before going on to the next point, you guessed it, was this helpful? Please leave a like to let others know, and on to the next real YouTube advice. So this next one is a bit controversial because the advice is always changing. Should you actually ask viewers to become subscribers or let the work speak for itself? I actually experimented with this and got some fascinating results. In one video, I did not ask anyone to subscribe and a certain amount subscribed anyway because the video did well. The next time I covered a very similar video, you guessed it, the Soul Reaver video, I had a powerful call to action in the middle of the video, and no exaggeration, I got maybe 5 times the amount of subscribers. Perhaps this was a one off I hear you say. Well, I have continued to always ask viewers to subscribe since, and how often I get new subscribers has never been the same. I always get more now. This is for a couple of reasons. Firstly, people forget subscribing is even an option. Do you subscribe to every single YouTube video you watch? I doubt it. But if you're really enjoying one and the content creator reminds you, hey, subscribing is an option, you might just go ahead and do it. Especially if they give you a reason to. I'm really not a fan of YouTube channels who specialize in channel growth, boasting about the fact that they don't need to ask anyone to subscribe because they are lying to you at that exact moment. By saying you don't need to ask people to subscribe, they are actually in fact reminding you to subscribe. It's a hustle on their part, gloating about not needing to ask while reminding you to do the thing they claim to never need to ask for. The advice you have likely never gotten is how to do it and most people do it wrong. They ask people to subscribe at the very start of the video and I think that's wrong. You have had no time to build any good vibes or earn that person's subscription. Plus, everyone asks at the start of the video so it's nothing special. I normally wait until the middle part of my videos to say a strong call to action. What do you bring to the table? Are you informative, bubbly, or do you plan on releasing future videos you think the viewer does not want to miss out on? Whatever it is, get it in there. Those who disagree with your call of action would have made poor subscribers as well, so it can also act as a handy filter. When people hit subscribe while watching a video, 
The YouTube algorithm loves that in case you didn't know. Your reach and views are always pushed out a bit more each time someone subscribes. Another real piece of advice and some truth is, are you talking about something people are currently looking up or something old? So with video games, I sometimes do a review on games that came out many years ago. These videos build up views very slowly over time. After all, not many people are randomly looking up a game that came out 10 years ago, but I decided to talk about it today. Like my The Evil Within 2 <laughs> video that I just came out, that's going to be a slow grower. Anyway, however, if I talk about a game that was just announced and there is a lot of excitement over it, that is something many people are looking up right now at this very moment. This will get more immediate views, but likely has no life to it. Once everyone has heard of the news, no one cares about your views on it, especially after the game is released. So I recommend a healthy mix, and again, this applies to all YouTube channels, even outside of gaming, Keep up to date with your chosen interests and try to provide a unique angle or a solution to breaking news for maximum reach. Did something just come out? A product of any kind and people want to know more because it's not immediately obvious? Put a video together and give those answers. Other times, use the keyword explorer I mentioned that TubeBuddy has to see what subjects always have monthly searches for. Forever green content is what these things are called. Someone is always looking it up, and so you can continue to get views for even years after uploading. I mix up old games a small group of dedicated fans always look up, and breaking news I am excited about. Again, affiliate link in the pinned comment and description if you want to check out TubeBuddy today. I honestly do use it myself and I'd be lost without it. A mistake I see a lot of small YouTubers do and it's something that can easily be fixed is watch your own videos please. The reality is no one wants to click on the video that was uploaded an hour ago and has zero views. Sometimes 12 hours ago and there are three views on there right? Fix this now. It shouldn't feel like a charity move for someone to click on the video no one else wants to watch. Seemingly even the creator themselves. Watch your video from your phone. Give it a thumbs up and watch it on some other devices connected to the internet around the house as well. I'm not saying fake hundreds of views or anything like that, but pay attention to momentum and human psychology. If a video came out an hour ago and has 12 views, I cannot stress enough how much better that looks compared to 0 to 2. It gives the impression that your upload is slowly getting momentum and that impression and yeah and that impression is a self-fulfilling prophecy as it leads to more people giving your video a chance which brings the numbers up which again brings more viewers in and the cycle goes on and on. There may be a tiny amount of people out there who will watch any video but that is not most people. We see the thumbnail, how many views, and how long ago it was uploaded. Also, the YouTube algorithm is not going to help you out with no views and data. I'm giving you the truth here. You're playing this game on hard mode for no reason if you upload your video and just hope for the best. Play your part. Has your video literally gotten zero views the past few hours? Borrow a phone. Search for your video and play through to completion. At the very least, your click-through rate is not 0% for that hour, and your watch-through rate is actually good since you let it play the whole way through. Speaking of perception, make sure you reply to people kind enough to comment on your video. It's a really bad look if you cannot be bothered replying to the one or two people who did take the time to comment and it actively stops others as well. Why should commenter number three say good job when they can see another two people said something a few days ago and they still haven't gotten anything back from you in return? Last bit of advice is sometimes videos just sink for whatever reason and there is nothing you can do about it. I have had my worst videos do great and my best videos sink. There are videos at the bottom of my YouTube ocean floor that had great retention and click through rates, even lots of likes and YouTube decided 40 views is enough. <laughs> That's it, you're done, you get out of here, right? It's just the nature of the beast and as I said, look after your mental health first. 
it's stressful how inconsistent this platform is and it can really bring you down. I'm hoping this video reaches lots of people, but it might not and I need to be okay with that. Anyway, God bless you all. Hope this was helpful to you and indeed gave you some hope for the future. Thank you very much if you're one of the kind souls who gave me a like or subscribed. I look forward to discussing games with you in the near future. Alright, bye bye.